So as you can see, I'm printing um, on my one hour printer. I'm printing the, uh, the flexi fingers for the Inmove robot at the moment. Uh, and as you can, you'll be able to see uh, on the uh, Octoprint, this has now been printing for uh, 14, come up to 15 hours and another three hours to go. I'm printing them at normal quality, not particularly massively high quality, but it's all the fingers in one go. Uh, sorry, it's, it is high quality, but it's, it's not the ball, isn't it? Um, if you're not using uh, Octoprint um, and you're using uh, uh, 3D printer, I, I highly recommend it. It's, it's really good. Uh, as you can see, you can see the temperature uh, of the print head, the, the, the hot end of the bed. Uh, Control-wise, you can get an image of the uh, of what you're printing, and you can you can just look at that if you want by opening that up in a, in a new tab. So if you um, just type in effectively your stream address, you can you can get into the. Uh, just the image itself. Uh, this is just on my layer anyway. Uh, got G code viewer. That's not going to show because of the size of this file, but normally it'll actually show the commands going out to the, uh, um, the printer. Literally, you know, the uh, left, right, X, Y commands. Uh, what else have we got here? Sorry, the, these are the, uh, the X, Y commands. Thank you. Which is, uh, if you want to look at them. Uh, you've got time lapse of all the various prints that you've done in the past. You can't run it while you're printing. Um, you know, just the previous uh, things I've been doing for uh, the, the move. You can actually see the various uh, different components. Uh, right, so we've got history, which is again showing various different uh, prints I've done. And uh, there's various, these are plugins here that you can get uh, showing different success failure rates. And, and Different things. Uh, there is other plugins. I don't use the SDLV. Uh, so the main thing I use is just check the temperatures and the control so I can see that. So I can pick that up anywhere on the Wi Fi in the house. I haven't put that on the internet. Um, there's also now a plugin um, to add additional folders, which is good. So you can actually store files within the folders so they're actually stored on the Raspberry Pi um, and again you can log in anywhere and just upload um, GK files into there and I'm doing the um, flexi hand at the moment so I've just uploaded from these flexi hand uh, these are the GK files in there I've um, I sliced them using Cura elsewhere. I don't use the slicer in this program, I really can. Okay. Uh, so that is uh, Octoprint, which will run on um, any, uh, well, it'll run on Windows, but it'll run basically after I'm running it on, on the Raspberry Pi. And that is Gina's uh, web page. There's uh, some great um, tutorials on how to install that, and it's pretty straightforward. There's, uh, there's a proper little um, fixed um, software download that will just load pretty much straight onto a Raspberry Pi. Uh, and 3D printer, uh, one of the guys on, on the internet has got a very good tutorial on it, I think link on it. Um, which is probably on here. So, highly recommended. As, as you see, you've got the various uh, plugins. I've probably got some new plugins that I haven't got, haven't used yet. Um, but it's worth, uh, very worth using. You can also add in um, relay controls because you can um, program it up, which I've actually sort of programmed up on another copy of uh, Raspberry Pi, but I haven't actually got it running on this printer, so I can actually remotely turn on and off the power, but I've never sort of finished off that little project. It doesn't come as a default setting, you've got to program it in. Um, just looking at other little controls I've got in there because I haven't looked at this for a bit. But, uh, that's my main, that's what I use the whole time. Alternatively, you obviously have to use the SD card on the um, on her printer, which is just a So this plugs USB into, into the system, as you can see there. Uh, and um, just directly connects um, and it's been absolutely faultless, I've got to say. Uh, I have no problems with this whatsoever. 
and Gina updates it regularly. There's a really good community we've got to preach. Uh, she does weekly podcasts, well, monthly podcasts, well, and well. Um, and um, I'd also recommend you support her. You can support her, you know, you can pay her uh, a small fee and give her money, which is good, keeps her busy, keeps her, keeps her uh, developing this uh, project herself, um, which is an excellent project. So that's, uh, that's Octoprint. Um, And soon these fingers will be printed. I'll show you the, um, the project in printing. Probably it. I think quite a few people are having a, a, a go at this one at the moment as well. Um, it's, it's, it will allow flexi hinges within the um, within the hands. I haven't printed these yet, uh, which is the flexi uh, uh, joints. Slot into the fingers. Um, I've never printed flexi um, um, anything on my printer, so uh, I've ordered some um, print material and it hasn't arrived yet. Once I've tried it, uh, I will, well, when I do it, I'm going to do a video on it. Um, I think you just have to slightly modify the way you print. Just sort of, uh, you stop the tension on the on the printer and. You may need to slightly modify the print head, but I don't think I need to do it on my i3. So I think I've got a Mark II, and I think that's pretty, um, it should should handle it. So we'll, we'll, we'll know on that one soon. It hasn't arrived yet with the, uh, the, um, the flexible print, uh, but hopefully soon. Um, but that's the only bit I need to print uh, with the flexi uh, um, plastic. Uh, this is what I'm printing at the moment on the on the print bed there, uh, and so that, as I said, that's taking 17 hours. These um, uh, that won't actually fit on my print bed, but I'm not I'm not doing that. That's that's uh, a different part of the usage. But uh, that I'm printing, I think, and then I cut off the end there so that I can modify it uh, onto the in the. Um, and obviously that bit, I think that takes about 16 or 17 hours as well, so that's the next bit I'm going to print. So, and, and that's a colour, so uh, it's only the left hand at the moment, so I'm not sure, once I've printed I'm going to see if I can just reverse the whole uh, the whole thing in cure and print the right hand and see how that goes. Um, I've also seen other people have modified this slightly and put a motor on, on here somewhere and uh, motorised this joint as well as the rotation. I think we've got the motor in there. I'm not quite sure how you did that, so that, that would be quite fun. And also I've seen people put the, all the finger motors inside inside here as well, inside, the, inside that section. So there's a few different mods of this going around. Um, different ways to do it. So um, I, will, I will look at that. I know there's a Bob Houston mod um, that he's, he's got the most on the outside and various different things as well. I've seen uh, a few other people have tried it as well. So that's, yeah, I think that's where you put the most list. I'm not quite sure how that works, but we'll see. Uh, so this has got another. Another two and a half hours to run, so it's taking its time, but uh, it's looking really good quality, good vapor quality. Um, then I've got to change the wheel because I'm running out of filament. That's uh, 28 litres of filament on that one. Put a new reel on um, and then print the, 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 the wrist uh, hand bit itself. Um, and see how we go. So that's where I am with, with that new flexi hand. As you can see, I'm just getting to the final end of a 17-hour print for the, uh, the flexi palm, the uh, fun move left-hand palm. Uh, this is the 
the open, the, the slightly more open palm. This is palm uh, version two. So you can see that the thumb is, uh, is bent back. It's more open basically on this one. So 17 hours, uh, 20 hours, sorry. Uh, 20 hours, 31 minutes. And I've got 12 minutes to go. So that's finally printed. It's come out very well. So I'll just take that off the print bed and we'll see. So we've taken that off the print bed, that's the, the flexi hand, that bit. Fingers are uh, printed yesterday. So uh, it's going to be part of the joint mechanism, that's, that's, that's part of the move print. Um, so I can assume that will fit in there. I've got to have a look how that joins actually, I think there might be an extra bit required there. So I've just got to print the uh, the back cover now. I'm printing the um, flexi hand, which uh, came out. It's come out really well. I'm really pleased about this. That's the cover. Those are the fingers. So that's the new. Um, those are the new flexi hand um, off uh, Thingiverse. Uh, this, these parts here are Gail's original um, section. It's the left hand. So these are the left hand sections. So I'm reprinting. I'm going to reprint a new arm, I think. Um, so that's that one. Uh, I've got to print the, um, the flexible um, plastic which I've never done before so I've just bought some from uh, Tech Warehouse uh, their flexible um, uh, printer plastic so uh, I will try that later but my printer's playing up again so that's uh, slightly slowed me down once again also I've been breaking things again um, that's the the um, front piston for the articulated neck that's the front one not the sides which I snapped off at the bottom but I snapped it because I pulled the head up uh, violently myself so it wasn't actually under server control and it just sheared off at the bottom there so i've glued i've glued that back on i think it's straight but we're going to find out um and i've drilled through a hole through into there uh, it was about a three mil hole to about there somewhere and put a uh, two, two inch screw in there a bolt in there so i poured a lot of arrow dye. I drilled, I drilled it out and then poured a load of arrow dye inside and then pushed the screw in and then just arrow dyed it over the top so hopefully that will strengthen up that joint and then I've you can see yeah you can see uh, I've put quite a bit of arrow dye about around that joint because that was the that was the weak bit and I've printed a new one just in case at much higher resolution like twice the resolution um, and twice the infill. I think that was 20% 20, 20 infill and this is 60% uh, infill or something. Uh, again, I've drilled out the bottom, put a screw through, arrow die, poured in arrow die, put a screw in there and arrow die did it around there. So that's the new one and that's the old one. Um, assuming that is vertical because if it's slightly off it's going to start twisting. So it's a bit difficult to tell if it was straight or not. So I've drilled another one anyway. Uh, so that's what I've been. I printed those. As I said, I printed the hand, and that's that came out really well. So it's annoying my printer's blowing up again. Um, it's just the nozzle keeps jamming up on the uh, on the one hoa. So I'm gonna re-slice a load of files at a higher uh, temperature and print it at a higher temperature. Because if I run, if I print at sort of ABS 210 degrees, the nozzle doesn't jam up. So I think that's what I should be doing. It's never been a problem. Print uh, originally, I think I printed most of the old Inmove at 210 rather than um, 
200 or 190 whatever they recommend uh, so I think that could be the problem because I've changed the nozzle a few times and uh, it's not the drive gear because you can hear it clunking away trying to push the uh, the filament through so uh, but that came out brilliantly um, and there's two versions of that there's one with the finger like that and there's the one with the finger like that and this one's that one uh, and they're the, they're the with a thumb like that sorry uh, they're the fingers um, what else have I been printing I've been printing this is the uh, who is it by this is the Monaby and Bob Houston eyeball where it's got the big eyeball it goes right round but again uh, this these these were fine these bits but the printer started playing up and is missed some layers on there. So again, the, the print wasn't coming through properly on that. On that. Um, but that's one of the eyeballs, so it's, it's a big eyeball, if you see what I mean. Um, and the face, I'm completely wrong, because you can see that. That's, oh, that's just um, support on there, but again, it's... It just disintegrated. It started off reasonably okay at the bottom and it just got worse. So again, it's because the, the filament isn't pouring and is, isn't flowing properly uh, through the print head and it's, it's stringing out, it's getting really thin. Um, so I've ordered a new print nozzle, but I must, as I say, I'm going to just increase the temperature of the print because I can't see any other problem. I hope there's another problem because I can't, uh, unless I've got a a board issue with temperature but looking at octoprint the temperature seems consistent so uh, I don't know so that's uh, I'm going to print a complete new head um, a second head I'm not going to replace the existing one I just want another head as, as, and then I can um, uh, just just have another head and try out the different eyes on, on my head and use it as a voice thing voice test also I am working on the power distribution unit for the back of the InMove uh, and I've just got putting some switches on there. I've just ordered another couple of switches. Um, so there'll be six switches on there. So it's going to be left arm, uh, right arm, left uh, hand, right hand, torso and head and probably a master on off switch sitting there and with a little um, mini meters that's going to be a tw um there's not going to be that one i've got a new one coming it's going to be a 50 amp one which will do power and wattage and voltage display on it um and that's going to go on the back of the in move which i will show you now actually let's pan this around so you can see the back of the box is going to go on the in move there camera on that and it's going to go on like that and that does it does work out with that on, on the back uh, it all comes to, it all fits together the box sits comfortably inside there Sorry, the wobbly camera. Um, I'm remounting the devices under here that my output devices there, but uh, I'll do a video on that. I'll just quickly show you where I am. So the, the robot's in bits again. Uh, I'm moving the cabling inside as well. So it's hopefully it'll tidy the whole thing up. That's where I am. New hands, uh, new pistons, new new wrist section um, and new Monaby uh, Bob Houston eyeballs section to be done uh, and uh, a 40, uh, <laughs> 40 print. That's it for now.